Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Cemetery Concerns, we exposed the big disturbing problems inside a local mausoleum. Now we are back with hidden cameras rolling and you may be surprised to see what we have found now. The whistleblower report is out and Congress has plenty of questions. Director, you don't believe the whistleblower is a political hack, do you? As President Trump sounds a familiar refrain. It's a disgrace to our country. It's another witch hunt. Here we go again. But we begin with major developments in the UAW strike on General Motors. GM reverses course on a major decision as talks at the negotiating table heat up. And today, General Motors said they would resume health care coverage for striking UAW members. Really big development because that reverses the decision made in the very early days of the strike that kicked health care costs back to the union. So let's get you caught up at the 5 o'clock hour. Initially, striking workers were forced to get COBRA coverage, a move union officials said actually put some lives in danger. As talks intensify, there are said to be major hurdles still left to clear. But that comes as the strike now reaches day 11. Rod Maloney shows us how how GM's decision is a sign that a deal might soon be reached. So you get to day 11 on the picket line and you start wondering, are we really getting positive progress? Yes, they're at the main table, but they're not going all night. Well, there was a big fight that happened last week. Lots of consternation out here. And today it's gone now because General Motors has gone back on its decision when it comes to health care. In a release today, the company said, quote, GM is very concerned about the significant confusion caused around our employees' health care coverage. Given this confusion, GM has chosen to work with our providers to keep all benefits fully in place for striking hourly employees so they have no disruption to their medical care, including vision, prescription, and dental coverage, end quote. What do we want? A contract. When do we want it? Now. UAW Local 163 strike captain Reuben Lewis took GM's move in stride. It's kind of part of the how it goes, but they didn't have to do it, but something they were, did to show maybe a disservice to us. It infuriated UAW Vice President Terry Didis when it happened, and he's still angry today, releasing this as part of a letter to GM. Quote, it is time for GM to come to the bargaining table with an offer that reflects the hard work of our members who make you successful and will settle this strike on behalf of the hundreds of thousands of UAW families and stop toying with our family's health and well-being, end quote. Yet for all the fiery rhetoric, Center for Automotive Research Analyst Kristen Dijic sees this as a positive step forward. You know, to me, that's a signal that this may get to a tentative agreement in you know, days and not weeks. Yes, they're again at the main table. They're talking. Let's not get too carried away, though. They still haven't gone in a marathon talk mode, and for all we know, they may not need to. They could come up with a settlement tonight, tomorrow, Monday. We just don't know what's going on. We don't necessarily know what all the sticking points are. The bottom line here is we just need to stick this one out. Back to you. Back to the health care decision here, Rod. Uh, is this GM deciding that their original decision to take the health care away during the strike was a bad idea? Well, yeah, I think in the end, the answer would be yes to the question. But let's face it, the UAW went out of its way to really, uh, you know, make GM look bad in its decision because the transfer from the regular health care to COBRA is not a smooth one. Right. And a lot of people sort of got put in between the cracks. They played that up and General Motors decided that at, at some point you just have to cut your losses. And that's what they've done. Yeah. All right. We'll stay on it, Rod. I know you will. A massive police presence today on Detroit's east side. Police were trying to pull over a man wanted on child sex assault charges. They stopped him at Grand and Kercheval, and when officers approached his car, they say he had taken his own life. Police tell us a warrant for his arrest was signed just this morning. The acting national intelligence director says a whistleblower did the right thing in filing a complaint against President Trump. Joseph McGuire testified in front of Congress this morning, minutes after the full whistleblower complaint was made public. That complaint details the president's controversial phone call with the president of Ukraine. It includes allegations the White House also tried to cover up the details of the call. President Trump is again calling this a witch hunt. Alice Barr on Capitol Hill with the document that sparked an impeachment inquiry. 
Good evening. After seeing the whistleblower complaint and hearing three hours of testimony, Democrats believe they have their strongest evidence yet for an impeachment inquiry, while Republicans are dismissing it as a partisan takedown of the president. A presidential abuse of power and a cover-up. Those are the allegations at the heart of the whistleblower complaint congressional investigators released today, just before Acting Director of National Intelligence Joseph McGuire began three hours of contentious testimony. Did you ever speak to the president about this complaint? My conversations with the president, because I'm the Director of National Intelligence, are privileged. The whistleblower accuses President Trump of using the power of his office to solicit foreign interference in the 2020 U.S. election, citing a July phone call when the president asked Ukraine's president to investigate Democrat Joe Biden and his son. President Trump attacking the allegations and the whistleblower. It's a disgrace to our country. My call was perfect. The president yesterday of Ukraine said there was no pressure put on him whatsoever. The complaint also alleges that White House lawyers were concerned President Trump had abused his power, and it accuses the administration of trying to lock down evidence by moving a transcript of the Ukraine call to a high security server. Acting DNI Chief McGuire under fire today for first taking the complaint to the White House instead of Congress. I was endeavoring to get the um, executive privilege concerns addressed. The White House did not, did not direct me to withhold the information. Republicans calling the hearing a political stunt, zeroing in on the fact the whistleblower didn't directly witness the alleged acts. I was told that, and I learned from multiple U.S. officials that, in other words, all of this is secondhand information. But House Speaker Nancy Pelosi seized on the allegations of hiding evidence. This is a cover-up. Believing Democrats now have compelling new evidence as they begin their impeachment inquiry. The acting DNI repeatedly defended the whistleblower today, insisting that person would be protected if he or she wants to appear before Congress. In Washington, Alice Barr, Local 4. All right, Alice, and you can read the whistleblower complaint for yourself. We've got it up on our website at clickondetroit.com. Pontiac police are investigating an attempted murder overnight. The shooting happened in the area of Bay Street and Dufresne Avenue. We're told while police were investigating an abandoned car, they got a call about a dead body found in a garage. They found a 17-year-old boy shot multiple times. He was breathing but unresponsive. That victim was taken to Royal Oak Beaumont in critical condition. We've got breaking news now just in from Wayne, where police are looking for a missing 17-year-old girl. Uh, Jada Naff was last seen near Wayne Memorial High School. Police say she is, uh, has mental disabilities, functions at a first grade level. So please take a look at these pictures. If you've got any information about her whereabouts, uh, contact Wayne Police right away. Well, you just can't beat the weather outside today. A big reason to get outside and make sure you're enjoying it because apparently it's not going to last. Right, Ben? Yeah, I mean, we know these days are slipping away as uh, we get closer uh, to the heart of fall and temperatures outside right now, nearly perfect. We've got very cool conditions, but also crisp conditions too with that low humidity. Wind speeds are about 10 to 15 miles an hour. A little bit of a noticeable breeze out there, but it's not terrible. It's going to be getting chilly tonight, so hang on for the four zone forecast. You'll want to see that rain and thunder at times this weekend, but the entire weekend is not going to be a washout. We'll look at the spots you need to avoid. And believe it or not, we're looking at two days of near record heat next week. We'll look at those numbers and the coolness behind them all coming up in a few minutes, Ken. OK, Ben, a quiet neighborhood in southwest Detroit isn't going to stay that way for long. Soon this area you see here will be in the shadow of the Gordy Howe Bridge and all the construction and noise that comes with it. And today the city kicked off work to make things better for the folks who live through it. Uh, Jamie Edmonds shows us how they're doing it. This right here is a sign of progress. All of the old windows stacked on the sidewalk while brand new energy efficient windows installed in this house on Central. 
These days, Jose Guzman loves the view from his brand new windows. Oh. This is the uni unit for there. And he was more than happy to show them off along with his new HVAC unit to Mayor Duggan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir, yes. Yeah. Guzman's home is in the Del Rey neighborhood, and it's the first to get upgraded through the Bridging Neighborhoods program. Uh, we're putting in extra insulation, putting in double pane windows so it's quieter, putting in uh, central air that filters almost to the level of hospital uh, operating rooms. The plan? To upgrade 200 houses that are within 300 feet of I-75. These upgrades are specifically to mitigate against air and noise pollution as truck traffic eventually increases with the construction of the Gordie Howe International Bridge. Something like 90 percent of the uh, house owners uh, in this area have taken advantage of it. So we're going to make this neighborhood uh, stronger and healthier for years to come. A Detroit company is doing the work, and Detroiters are the beneficiaries, especially Guzman, an iron worker who was called to assist at Ground Zero in the aftermath of 9-11. A new air filter in his home will do wonders for his respiratory problems. The whole uni and all the dust that come inside the house, so I'm very grateful for that. Thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. it. And you're going to stay in Detroit? Oh, that's right. I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> nowhere. No way, Jose. 38 other houses just like Jose's will be completed by the end of the year. In the Delray neighborhood, Jamie Edmonds, Local 4. And this bridging neighborhood's effort will cost $6.5 million, and it's funded through the $45 million community benefits agreement the city made for the bridge project. Much more ahead here this afternoon. Here's Nick Monticelli. It is a cold case still haunting the Taylor community. The brutal killing of Chelsea Small, who was just working inside a cash advance store. It just, it didn't, it didn't fit that, you know, they had taken her life. But could a life sentence for one man be the key to cracking this case? The new lead giving hope to detectives and Chelsea's family. Okay, Nick, and state police say these two ripped off a pair of Metro Detroit Walmarts and just rolled away on scooters. How they did it, new at five. Help me, Hank. Hidden cameras expose the serious problems inside a local mausoleum. Now some big changes have been made and state investigators moving in. We have the story, new tonight.